Hello class, in module 7's video, we're going to be talking about the New Deal. This is very much related to the material that we learned about in the previous module there with the Great Depression. Um, here our focus is not so much on trying to characterize causes of the Great Depression or how bad things were, but instead trying to understand what the government did as a response. Um, there are two presidents who served, who were in office during the Great Depression, Herbert Hoover, uh, and then in 1932, FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, was elected. Um, and this is notable because these two presidents had a totally different viewpoint on how they should address uh, some of these economic problems. Franklin Roosevelt, elected, like I said, in 1932, uh, has come to be known as one, maybe more than any other president, who is seeking out a really active role for government uh, in the economy. And so he introduced a lot of reforms, a lot of new agencies, a lot of government action um, there in the 1930s uh, that some of those sort of policies, some of those reforms persist until today. And you probably see some on the board right behind me. All right, so let's get right into it. What were some New Deal policies here under FDR? First one that I want you guys to know about was the creation of FDIC. And FDIC stands for Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. And this is related to banking. Think back to the previous module. Um, one of the big problems and causes of the Great Depression was bank runs, bank panics, in which people would lose confidence that their money is safe in a given bank. They'd rush down and take out their money so that they could be among the customers to actually withdraw their money. And as this process uh, continued and spiraled, uh, banks would go under. They wouldn't be able to meet the demands and their customers would lose confidence. So FDIC then is an attempt to remedy that problem of bank runs. And what it does is that the federal government will guarantee any deposit that is in an FDIC Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation covered bank or financial institution. Uh, the logic behind it is that uh, if customers are aware that FDIC will guarantee uh, any deposits that they have in the bank, there's no cause to run down and panic and try to withdraw their money. And since FDIC, we have not had a bank run. So I think this is largely viewed now as a really successful reform. Okay. On to our next one. We also saw the creation of something called the Civilian Conservation Corps. I'm hoping that you guys remember that during the Great Depression, we saw unprecedented levels of unemployment. Right? Unemployment uh, as high as 25%, and many, many people unable to find a job. The Civilian Conservation Corps stepped in to try to address that problem, and here we saw the government serving sort of as an employer of last resort, meaning that if a person couldn't find a job uh, in other circumstances, they could appeal to the federal government. And the government would then hire this, uh, this army of unemployed workers um, to do stuff, to do productive things for the country. So the Civilian Conservation Corps then resulted in the government hiring people to um, build up our public infrastructure, uh, the creation of roads, development of flood control projects. Um, a lot of the work that we've seen in national parks came from the Civilian Conservation Corps. Um, the size of this program was huge. At its peak, 7% of the labor force, 7% right, of those people either working or unemployed, had a job underneath the Civilian Conservation Corps or a similar government program. Third big reform that we saw under the New Deal was the development of Social Security. And this one kind of stands out from the others because Social Security is a big deal uh, both in the 30s and it's a big deal right now. Um, this is a major part uh, of federal government spending here today. Uh, the way this program works is that while uh, employed and while of working age, uh, people will pay this uh, particular tax, they'll pay into the system and then upon retirement, a person can apply for benefits under Social Security. Um, 
And you've probably seen this before at, uh, at your job, right? If your, government, if your employer is taking out taxes labeled FICA, these are social security taxes, right? So you're paying into that, and then when you retire, fingers crossed, you'll be able to draw some benefits from social security. And primarily, uh, the benefits from social security go toward uh, elderly folks, uh, but there's also spending that is directed towards folks who can't work for themselves because of some disability uh, or something of that nature. problem that we're trying to solve here that is trying to be uh, we're attempting to address with Social Security uh, is that in the absence of the program lots of old folks had not saved enough for retirement and the idea is that that's a bad thing for the, for the economy and for the country and Social Security can address that the fourth reform that I want you guys to know about is the creation of the SEC uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, the SEC regulates financial institutions, uh, trying to give more, more structure to the way that these sort of businesses uh, conduct themselves. So things like getting rid of insider trading, which means that a person can uh, trade stock based on some private knowledge that they have that other people don't have, or uh, requirements that we have about companies disclosing and making public financial information if it's a publicly traded company. And these are things that uh, have relevance when we're talking about the SEC. So again, the punchline here, I think uh, more structure and regulation uh, of financial companies. The fifth and final reform here I want you guys to know about is MIRA, as it's uh, sometimes abbreviated. That's the National Industrial Recovery Act. And the objective here was to sort of change the rules and the institutions for businesses. We wanted to create businesses, or excuse me, a framework for businesses that uh, encouraged good behavior. And uh, some of the things that you saw then here under Mira uh, was some uh, price controls, right? The government would dictate to firms what sort of prices they could charge. They would dictate to firms uh, the number of hours that they could hire a person for or uh, how much they would have to pay a particular worker. While well-intentioned, Miro represented a quite heavy-handed, uh, a, a lot of involvement from government into private matters. Uh, and so while the hope was to create some good outcomes for workers, Mira was, was deemed unconstitutional only a few years later because the government was telling businesses what to do uh, to such a large degree. Uh, so we saw this for a little while, but Mira, of course, is something that's not the law that is being enacted today. All right, guys, there you go. Five important New Deal policies. I'll see you in the next module.